What's going on guys? It's your girl Angie Snatch coming at you with another episode of the Unbiased Truth Decoding the Brother Polite Trial. And today I want to talk about that new docket entry in the Michael Noah case down in Miami-Dade. I was scrolling down my timeline. Shout out to Tripsy's Treehouse. She actually broke this story. Well, she's the person that I heard it from that made me go look at it. So I wanted to break this story down, get a little more clarity for everyone on what this new docket entry means. So on October 11th, uh, the prosecution entered state's discovery exhibit states demand for defense discovery demand for alibi and this last part demand for notice of subpoena deuces tecum so what that basically means that last portion means that they are also demanding for him to notify them of any witnesses he plans to call in his defense as well as any documentation that's in the state's possession or that he plans to be subpoenaing from a third party this works a little bit different in florida because the state is demanding for his discovery as well as his alibi but in order for him to demand documentation he has to go through a judge and the judge has to then deem that the documents that he's seeking are relevant i wanted to pull up this template of kind of what that uh notice looked like for his alibi this is from the Department of Justice, their criminal resource manual. So what it will have is pursuant to whatever charges that they um, file against him. And in Polite's case, he has four felony counts and one misdemeanor. That will be listed there. The date, time, and location will be listed as well. And then they will request for any testimony any video evidence, any evidence he has to provide an alibi or even a written um, statement of his alibi if he chooses not to uh, call a witness or respond using a witness. Now, this case, the ball is really rolling because how this works is I'm going to first read for you the prosecution's discovery obligations, then I'm going to read the defense's discovery obligations. What you will find for both is once the prosecution files this discovery, the defense and the prosecution both have 15 days to respond to this. So that means by this being filed by the um, prosecution on the 11th, sometime by the 26th, we will see another docket entry from the defense now responding to the prosecution's demands as well as entering their notices of subpoenas and people they plan on subpoenaing. So the prosecution's discovery obligation. Within 15 days after service of the notice of discovery, the prosecutor shall serve a written discovery exhibit which shall disclose to the defendant and permit the defendant to exhibit, I mean, sorry, to inspect, copy, test, and photograph the following information and material within the state's possession or control, except that any property or material that portrays sexual performance by a child or constitutes child pornography may not be copied, photographed, duplicated, or otherwise reproduced, so long as the state attorney makes the property or material reasonably available to the defendant or the defendant's attorney. And that would definitely affect this case, I'm sure. A list of the names and addresses of all persons known to the prosecutor to have information that may be relevant to any offense charge or any defense thereto, or to any similar fact evidence to, pre to be presented at trial under section 90.404-2, Florida statutes. The names and addresses of persons listed shall be clearly designated in the following categories. I'm sorry, I wanted to mention really quick, this is the Florida Criminal Code Rule 3.220H1, if I have that correctly. I did want to state that. So, Let's move on to the defense's obligation. This is now Brother Polite's obligations now that he has received that discovery exhibit. I do have a little nuance with that prosecution side because I'm thinking, because it says that they have 15 days to produce the exhibit. On the 11th, that docket entry says discovery exhibit. 
I'm thinking that they gave him this notice 15 days prior to the 11th. And now he has 15 days after the 11th to respond. Tell me what you think about that. Defendant's obligation. If a defendant elects to participate in discovery, either through filing the appropriate notice, because remember, he doesn't have to participate in discovery. That doesn't mean that he doesn't have to respond to their subpoenas. It means that he doesn't have to engage and choose to subpoena anyone or any documents himself. He can just choose to look at what the state has and then fight their case instead of adding more um to their case because in the discovery process you never know what may come out and what will be relevant to the state's case to help them or by participating in any discovery process including the taking of a discovery deposition the following disclosure shall be made within 15 days after receipt by the defendant of the discovery exhibit furnished by the prosecutor pursuant to subdivision b1a of this rule the defendant shall furnish to the prosecutor a written list of the names addresses of all witnesses whom the defendant expects to call call as witnesses at the trial or hearing when the prosecutor subpoenas a witness whose name has been furnished by the defendant except for trial subpoenas the rules applicable to the taking of depositions shall apply B, within 15 days after receipt of the prosecutor's discovery exhibit, the defendant shall serve a written discovery exhibit, which shall disclose to and permit the prosecutor to inspect, copy, test, and photograph the following information and material that is in the defendant's possession or control. The statement of any person listed in subdivision D1A other than that of the defendant. Reports or statements of experts that the defendant intends to use as a witness at trial or hearing made in connection with the particular case, including results of physical or mental examination and of scientific tests, experiments or comparisons and any tangible papers or objects that the defendant intends to use in the hearing or trial. See why I say this ball is rolling? Because now with this being uh, served, they have 15 days to respond. So October 26, we should see something moving. I really think that that uh, status hearing on December 3rd will be something bigger than we thought to look out for. Now, though they have 15 days, uh, we know how the law works. There can always be continuations filed by the defense. Uh, the prosecution can always, if they feel like the defense is taking too long, their only avenue is really to file a contempt of court. The judges aren't really hovering over this discovery process. It would have to be up to one party or the other to kind of file a contempt or some type of motion or something in front of the judge to let them know that uh, they're not complying. But I think that that December 3rd hearing is going to be something to watch. But not only that, all of the key characters that I talked about in my very first video, who is Linda Orocho, this is when they're all going to come into play. I, I'm going to assume that they've already spoken to detectives several times. But now we're talking about on the record subpoenas. And even those depositions, those previous depositions can still come into play. And just because Polite may or may not take a plea deal in this case, or they may settle, he may take a plea deal, it doesn't mean that the prosecution won't uh, take their testimony to bolster their case so they can at least have some effect in the sentencing portion of this. But before I leave, I found this video on Black News TV. It is Brother Polite speaking with Prince York about the Dr. York situation. I think this is a perfect time to add this because more information will unfold. And I think he had a full grasp on how his followers should now see this situation from an objective point. Let's check it out. I believe, I do not know, I believe Dr. York is innocent. I have tremendous reason to believe that he's innocent. However, I do not know. I never slept in his bed. You feel what I'm saying? There's two sides or three sides to the story. His side, his side, and then there's the truth. So all I could do as an observer is weigh in 
on the information. And I can clearly see the conspiracy. I can prove the conspiracy to bring the man down. But even in light of a conspiracy being used to bring the man down, even amidst of the propaganda promulgated throughout the media to infiltrate our consciousness, there still may be reason to believe that he may have done it. So as a rational being, I decided since I have never been in that man's bed to watch what he does day in and day out and the nature of the charges and the allegations, I still hold him dear in my heart as my father and my master teacher. I don't turn my back on him. Well, Unfortunately, I just do not know if he did or he didn't. And it's my right to say, I simply don't. There you have it. We just don't know. All we can do is we can keep covering this case, gathering more information, because in the words of Brother Polite, it's his side, it's his side, and it's the truth. And that's what we're here for. We're here for the truth. No matter how um, the cookies crumble, we're here for the truth because we just don't know. But we know that we don't want to turn a blind eye anymore in any case. It just so happens to be that he is the predator under the spotlight right now. And that's something that he has to own. And he may not have had to respond back to us, uh, the consumer, but he has 15 days to respond to Prosecutor Garcia. All right, guys, I'll check you out next time. It's Angie Snatch.